Chris, thank you. First this morning, we're staying on top of a case involving a teen accused of beating to death two homeless men in Albuquerque. We now know that Gilbert Tafoya will have to testify against the other two suspects in the case. As part of a plea deal, Tafoya was able to plead guilty to second instead of first degree murder and other charges. Police say last year, Tafoya, then 15, along with Nathaniel Carrillo and Alex Rios, beat three homeless men with bricks and cinder blocks in a dirt lot on West Central. We're Nathaniel Carrillo and Alex Rios equally involved in that beating of those men. Yes. One of the men escaped. The other two died. As part of his deal, Tafoya could be sentenced as a juvenile and spend as little as five years in prison or be sentenced to 20 years as an adult. One widow's persistence is reopening the case of an Albuquerque jeweler who was murdered more than 25 years ago. James Gossen was an Albuquerque diamond dealer in the 80s. In 1988, he went missing from the couple's home in the Heights. He wasn't found until six months later in a shallow grave outside Santa Fe. His widows hired a private investigator. They badgered state police and also gotten Crime Stoppers to post a reward. A man accused of shooting another outside an Albuquerque nightclub is now facing 15 years in prison this morning. In June, Michael Ponce got into a fight with the victim inside the Lotus nightclub. Ponce later shot him in the alley, then sped off, blowing through stop signs, police say, and throwing his gun out the window. Ponce was arrested. The victim survived. In court yesterday, he pled guilty to being a felon in possession of a firearm. Happening this morning, the doors open in just hours for early voting in Albuquerque's city election. Voters will decide on four city council seats. There's also a proposed tax increase for biopark improvements and a proposal to allow the city council to approve the hiring and firing of police and fire chiefs. For a list of early voting locations and hours, open the KRQE News app. Time is 6.03. A new program is helping people and businesses in New Mexico collect rainwater and put it to use. These large barrels were, were installed at seven homes and two businesses. It's part of a pilot program between the Water Utility Authority and the New Mexico Water Collaborative. Once rainwater has been collected, it can be used around the home. The Water Authority wants to see how effective the systems are over the next couple of years. Meantime, the Secretary of State's office says it will conduct an extra audit of reports due from candidates next month. The move comes as Secretary of State Diana Duran herself faces allegations that she spent campaign contributions at casinos. State law requires the Secretary of State's office to audit a random selection of 10% of the reports filed after each election cycle. The next filing date is October 13th. Developing on this Thursday morning, people who live on the Pajarito Mesa now have a way to help first responders find them in an emergency without identifiable roads or addresses. Those who want to participate can get an identification number assigned to their home. Officials say this number is not an address. It's only for first responders. The number corresponds with a map system that shows them how to get there. Rely on landmarks and things like that and, and directions that the people are giving you uh, by having these. Um, we'll know exactly what that location is. The county is holding public meetings to explain the new voluntary system and sign people up. Information is posted on the KRQE News app. Republican presidential contenders hit the campaign trail again this morning, hours after their second primetime debate. The group met on stage last night. Ten candidates took on frontrunner Donald Trump and tackled other topics, too, during the three-hour-long debate. Carly Fiorina, who appeared on the main stage for the first time, responded to Trump in person after comments he's accused of making about her. Some say Dr. Ben Carson, who has gained popularity in the polls, mostly faded to the background in the discussion. The next debate, which is expected to focus on economic issues, is scheduled to happen next month. Also developing this morning, police in Hungary are now resorting to tear gas and water cannons to stop Syrian migrants and refugees from entering the country. Two people were seriously injured during this incident on the Serbia-Hungary border. Most others walked away with cuts and bruises. Doctors also say there are a lot of eye problems after some of the migrants were hit with tear gas. Officials say the violence started when refugees broke through fences, allegedly throwing water bottles at officers. New video this morning shows children inside a Connecticut juvenile detention center being tackled to the ground. A child advocate released those videos on the agency's uh, website on Monday as part of an investigation into inappropriate use of restraints and isolation. DCF officials say they have already made improvements in the system. Happening today, lawyers for Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl are expected in court to argue whether he should face a court martial over his disappearance from a base in Afghanistan. 
Authorities say Bergdahl vanished in June 2009 after he deserted his unit. That incident set off a series of events that included his five year capture by the Taliban. President Obama later freed five people held at Guantanamo Bay in exchange for Bergdahl last year. In March of this year, the military charged him with desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. The preliminary hearing will be in Texas later today. Let's turn to a live look in Washington, D.C. this early morning. President Obama, he's scheduled to meet the men who took down a gunman on a Paris train. Anthony Sadler, Alex Scarlatos and Spencer Stone. They're said to have taken down the gunman last month. The White House says the president wants to thank the California natives for their extraordinary bravery. France's president already honored all three men for their quick thinking and quick action. Convenience store chain 7-Eleven is pushing back this morning against aggressive panhandlers hiring security outside of 10 Dallas locations. And while doing a story on that issue, a news crew got a firsthand look at the problem. I need $2 for .com. You know it's illegal for you to ask that? Is it? Yes, How would I know? I've been in a room for three years. Why are you yelling at me? A recent safety patrol study documented more than 19,000 public nuisance officials last year in the area, such as panhandling and sleeping in public. Police issued 4,600 citations. 7-Eleven says the overnight guards are just temporary. Residents of a Tennessee apartment complex say they're used to seeing bears, but when this one started climbing up and down balconies, they were pretty surprised. They say the bears stayed around for about 10 minutes. When he finally started climbing down, they made sure to get their cameras. People living in the complex say they've seen the bear walking in and around the parking lot and nosing around dumpsters, but who knew he was an acrobat, right? Wow, quite the video.